Hello there, this is Being God's Obedient Servant channel. Uh, it's a Bible study channel. Uh, we study one chapter at a time if you're new to this channel. We're currently in Genesis. We're going to be doing chapter 21 tonight. So, I'm going to go ahead and jump right on in here. This is, uh, we're still in the story of Abraham. This is, uh, Chapter 21, verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah, and he had, as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. So, you pause here for a second. Um, to get more into this, if you've you know been with the beginning of this, Abraham's waited many many years. He's uh, finally conceived a child with Sarah, his wife, at the age of 99. And so, <laughs> normally by this time, the women can't bear children anymore in these age groups. So this was a a prayer answered and a blessing all at once. So. But God promised to give Abraham a child, and Sarah got, um, she didn't wait on the Lord, and neither did Abraham, and Abraham, you're hearing this story here in a moment, about the other child Abraham had with a handmaiden, and, but God said to Abraham that, no, I still will have give you a son through Sarah, that's the one that will be having the blessings of you and will be uh, the one the, the seed that carries on uh, you know Abraham is the father of the Israelites Isaac's name gets later name changed later to Israel so that's how you become the Israelites so the main teaching of this is to when God said he would do something for you or you keep asking God for something wait just wait you know, God answers prayers and does things in his time, not our time. And it's a hard thing. Like, I talk to God a lot about certain things, because I never got to have a family of my own. I still would like to, but, like, I tell guys, like, hey, I, you know, <laughs> I have a time limit here. It's like, I'm not everlasting yet. But, you know, for if, I, if I'm to have a family, then God will grant me that. If not, then so be it. You know, that's just the way it is. It said God expects us to be happy with the blessings that he has given us and be happy with the life he's given us. And uh, sometimes it's hard, especially depending upon which area in life you come from. Especially if you grow up poor and stuff and get picked on a lot or get, you know, shunted from society for growing up poor. It's a little tough. It, 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 it uh, messes with your mind a little bit on that. But it said, like, when you give your life to the Lord and you start living the way he says, you start seeing the world and everything through his eyes. And that's what we're to do. So let's proceed on. <clears throat> Verse 4. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac eight days old as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh so that all that here will laugh with me and she said who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck for I have borne him a son in his old age and a child grew and was weaned and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned and Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, and because of thy bondwoman, and all that Sarah hath said unto thee, 
hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and took bread and a bottle of water, and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him, and lift up her voice, and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of God called Hagar out of heaven, and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran. And his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. And it came to pass at that time that Abimelech, the Philcol, the chief captain of his post, spake unto Abraham, saying, God is with thee in all that thou doest. Now therefore swear unto me here by God that thou wilt not deal falsely with me, nor with my son, nor with my son's son, but according to the kindness that I have done unto thee, thou shalt do unto me, and to the land wherein thou hast sojourned. And Abraham said, I will swear. And Abraham reproved Abimelech because of a well of water, which Abimelech's servants had violently taken away. And Abimelech said, I wot not who hath done this thing, neither didst thou tell me, neither yet heard I of it but today. And Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them unto Abimelech, and both of them made a covenant. And Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What mean these seven ewe lambs which thou hast set by themselves? And he said, For these seven ewe lambs shalt thou take of my hand, that they may be a witness unto me that I have digged this well. Wherefore he called that place Beersheba, because... There they swear both of them. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba, and Abimelech rose up and Phicol, the chief captain of his host, and they returned into the land of the Philistines. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba, and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned in the Philistines' land many days. So, this is the end of this chapter. Um, there's a little bit of teachings in here, but mostly this is uh, the storytelling of the birth of Isaac and how it all came to pass. So we've come to this part. Uh, we still have more with Abraham, quite a bit more. But uh, instead of doing it one chapter at a time, so I'm just going to end this one right here today. And if you want to, you can go back and listen again or read it for yourself, you know, a few times. Um, I recommend that to read the Bible multiple times to study it and learn more from it. Because that's the only way you do learn the Bible is by reading it, uh, not just once, but many times. As I said before, it's like every time you read through it once and go back and read it again, your eyes are opened a little bit more and you learn a little bit more. This is uh, you hear it in the Bible. You Well, in the future, you're going to hear it from the Bible quite, quite a bit where it says, he who has an ear, let him hear. And that's what it means. It's like, you know, I will open up the ears and I will open up the eyes of those that I want to be known of what I want them to be known.
and that's how the Bible works. You know, your eyes are only opened to a few things at each time you read it. And I would, I'm kind of glad it does it that way because it helps it helps someone like me, anyways, learn a, a lot easier instead of trying to learn everything at one time. It's just too much. You have to learn it little pieces at a time. And while you're learning it, you, you know, put it towards your own life. And that's kind of how you read the Bible is every time you read a chapter or read verses, you say, can, you know, can I apply this to my life to make my life better and make myself closer to God? So, as I said, the main teaching is there is uh, patience. It's uh, being humans, <laughs> we don't have much of it. But that's the teachings of the Bible is us to be patient and God will answer our prayers. And so we just have to learn to be patient and wait on the Lord because he works in his time, not our time. So anyways, this is a said at the end of this study. Hope you all have a good evening and a good night.